Hello everybody, this is the Emerald Doctor, and today we're going to be looking at my all-in-one fully automatic farm design. Now I've seen a lot, seen some of this out there, and most of it is just like gigantic buildings and tons and tons of redstone and overcomplicated stuff. This makes it a lot easier, and it's based off a very simple principle I came up with. Before we get into this actual farm design, we're going to go take a look at the principle itself. I have set up a sugarcane farm that is fully automatic and we can go take a look at that right now. Alright, here we are at the sugarcane farm and we have some options over here for some things that we'll get to later. And over here we have a chest that's full of sugarcane and the lights telling us that it's full and needs to be picked up from. Now let's go to outside and take a look at this concept. Go out here and this is what you have. You have four T bud switches. If you don't know what a T bud switch is, it is a bud switch block update detection that allow that set, that keeps a constant pulse if it has been updated. I have four sets of sugarcane growing, and when they hit their maximum height, they trigger the bud switch on each one. And two bud switches go into one AND gate. Two bud switches go into another AND gate, and they go into one big AND gate. And then this AND gate here, when it's fully triggered destroys the sugar cane in here and lets it get harvested down to the uh, down the water stream and over here it resets all the other sugar canes so they can re-begin the process again I found that four sugar cane growing like this allows the sugar cane, all of it, to get the three high before it gets destroyed and reset this all this water stream here it feeds into a hopper which goes into a minecart transportation system which we'll go take a look at right now here we are at the hopper area the first hopper is right here, it feeds into this hopper and then goes into a storage minecart when there is sugar cane flowing through this hopper here it gets detected by this comparator it goes through a monostable circuit and then turns on this powered rail here but only if there's stuff going through and once it stops going through this gets sent, not during it's going through, so it gets all the sugar cane that's been harvested at once. And this minecart goes down through this track area here, comes up on top, minecart comes up over here and feeds into this hopper here that goes into that chest we saw earlier, and uses the same comparator monostable circuit combination to make sure that the chest drops off all its items before leaving. Now that's it for the transportation part of the fully automatic farm. Let's go take a look at the second main idea I had for my fully automatic farm here. And it's right here. Uh, it's a multiple AND gate, which basically means that I'm having more than two torches attaching to an AND gate here, like four in this example. And you just flip the switch, and they all turn off at once and turn on light, off on. This is very important for having multiple bud switches like this. Over on the fully automatic farm, as we will see later, I have a tri and gate. Here we are back at the all in one farm, and now we're going to go right into actually what this thing really does. So I'm going to go over here. Unfortunately, I cannot show this when it is actually ready to harvest and everything like this because you have to time it just right and it gets really hard to do it on video. So basically, what you would do, you'd have this in your world somewhere, and you'd walk up and you'd see these lights to be on, because they are, are not currently. And that would mean it's time to go in and take care of your crops. So you'd walk over the pressure plate here, and up above these droppers here, they shoot down nine of each nether wart, cocoa beans, seeds, potatoes, and carrots. And also, in this one, a hoe if you need it. Now you walk through after you have your supplies, and you go inside your farm here. You cannot walk off the side and fall in the water. And on both sides here you have carrots and potatoes, which are, um, are pretty much done growing. And behind you you have your cactus. On each of the corners of this big X here are cactus growing, so I could fit in the last uh, produce item. Now walking through, on this over here you have pumpkins and melons together. On the left over here you have sugarcane and wheat cactus again 
cane on this side, you have on the left and right cocoa beans and nether wart and cactus at the end again. Now this will all become harvested once the bud switches activate, which I'm going to go take a look at right now. Alright, now we're down in the bud switch area. It's going to look a bit messy because it is, but this is a really crazy area because all the things are actually going on here. So we'll go step by step. First we have our bud switches. Over here we have a tea bud hooked up to a pumpkin and a melon. And those go into their own AND gate here. We have one sugarcane tea bud like we looked at earlier, another one over there, and they go into this AND gate. And then we have two cactus bud switches. They're not tea buds, they're a different design that I came up with here. And they feed into their AND gate. And all three of those AND gates feed into this tri AND gate here which then allows the signal to be sent up through this tower and to reset all the crops by activating pistons and water dispensers. This part right here in front of the end gate lets set out a monostable pulse so that it doesn't stay on all the time. And this right here is a locking repeater for the resetting mechanism so that the farm only resets when you go over the pressure plate and get your crops to replant or else you'd you might forget about your farm and come back and it would have grown multiple times and harvested multiple times but you wouldn't have had your full harvest because your part of your plants aren't there. So let's go back up to the service and look what's underneath the pressure plate at the door. Here we are underneath the door. The door sends a signal right down to here and follows this wire into a pulse extender which then goes into a comparator here through a repeater and allows the dispensers that we saw earlier to shoot down all eight of your items that you need. It currently is being locked because if you were to go over the pressure plates to check on your crops you do not want the dispenser shooting out your items all the time at you. Now the other part of this line right here it goes down this little path and goes into another AND gate which allows it to reset itself on that locking repeater but it has to be signaled by the sand gate here first. Now the sand gate is also being controlled by this line right here of the pressure plate. It control there is a pulse extender here, so you don't have to stay on the pressure plate the whole time. It turns off one of these torches here, but obviously since it's an gate it won't work. But if all the bud switches have been activated, this line will turn on and this torch will turn off and will allow it so that when you step on the pressure plate up there this AND gate will turn off and this torch will turn on and it will reset the entire system including the locking repeater that we just looked at. So it gets a bit complicated and confusing when you start getting so many AND gates and things going on and this reset line goes down over here all the way underneath all our crazy bud switches and messy area and comes up right over here and this is the and it hooks up this repeater which is currently locking this repeater which allows it to not reset the entire system just when the bud switches go off. Now let's go and take a look at the transportation system. Here at the transportation system above us you can hear the water that 3x3 three three area at the top with all the hoppers feeds down into this chest right here which acts as a buffer because there's usually a lot of crops you get and this feeds into this hopper here which will then go into this minecart. But again, using one of those comparator monostable circuits, it will not go until it's fully filled up. So let's put some items in it and follow it to its drop-off point. It's filled up with 12 carrots. Wait for it to go. 12 carrots, and it gets sent off. Now usually they would be filled with all kinds of crops, and it'll have at least Eight of the carrots, potatoes, nether wart, wheat, and cocoa beans. And since you do not want your dispensers that dispense all your crops to replant to run out, this minecart here goes around this little system I made. It goes around it eight times, exactly, drops off eight items into each one of the droppers so that it gets exactly the right amount so you can come and replant as often as needed and the surplus gets sent over to your storage system. 
this took a very long time to get the timing right and down and is quite complicated so I'm not going to go in that much detail about it. Now when this thing is gone around eight times, which it will be in a second, this track will switch and the track down here will switch and it will continue on down and into this drop off point over there. There is a bit of an off chance that sometimes it will bug out like it just did there but most of the time it'll just go around eight times and drop it off. It's very rare that that happens actually. So let's just follow the path and pretend like we're the minecart. It would go down here, go down this track, which would be kind of hard because it's pretty much blocked off. I keep going and it'll go into that little drop-off system we made earlier at the sugarcane farm. Same exact thing right here. And when it's done dropping it off, it'll go back and right to its starting point again. And right here you can come collect your wheat and all your other crops. And the light will turn on as you put any items in here so you know that you have your chest all filled up. This chest here would actually be this close to your farm. It would be somewhere far off, like in a storage room in your main base. This just provides an example. Uh, this farm would actually transport your items to wherever you want them to go. I mean, it's fully automatic, so it'll just keep doing it over and over. You don't even have to come to it and replay if you don't want to, but you'll only be able to get pumpkins and sugar cane and things that don't require to be replanted every time. This design is pretty compact compared to all the other all-in-one farms I've seen. It's quite large, but you could get rid of almost all this quartz and all those half slabs I showed earlier. And actually, it's quite small. The redstone underneath is pretty big, just because it needs to be for all the function it does. But all in all, I think this is a really good idea. Complicated, but very good. It uses a lot of logic gates and things. I had, had a really good time making it. It took a long time, but it was, it was pretty fun. It's uh, fully automatic, which is really cool in my opinion, because when I play survival, I always like to have fully automatic things. I can just walk up to a chest and grab my crops and go, instead of having to go and far farm them all, harvest them all, and all that kind of stuff. So this is my all-in-one universal redstone fully automatic farm design here. My uh, This currently does work in the 13 week 42B snapshot. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll be posting this video to both the Minecraft forums and on YouTube. My YouTube channel is The Emerald Doctor. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a good day.